EAA Chapter 166 in Hartford, Connecticut. It's the home of the Vans RV12 build. It's another build night here at the RV12 construction hangar at the Hartford Jet Center at Brainerd Airport in Connecticut, where work continues on the RV12, including the installation of the Rotax 912 engine and also some fiberglass work to uh, put some fairings together. Rick Montero is gonna tell us about that fiberglass work and then we'll talk to Mark Welch to hear a little bit more about uh, the progress on installing the engine. So since the last time we met, uh, we were doing some work on fairings and that work has continued um, over the last several weeks. And something that we completed recently is the uh, tail cone fairing. So there's a lot of work that went into that. And I can uh, kind of describe that for you. So if we walk over to where the uh, tail cone is. So we've finally gotten this com completed. Um, there's quite a bit of work that's involved in doing it and it took uh, several weeks worth of work you know doing working on it part-time but uh, it comes in two halves this is the upper half that you see here and then this part here is part of the lower half which is the bulk of it is under the stabilator and uh, not only do you have to cut it and shape it um, for all the various openings, you know, for the uh, stabilator spar and then the uh, trim tab push rod. Um, but you also have to shape it so that the two halves go together pretty nicely and fits uh, tightly. And then there's a lot of nut plate work that has to be uh, done to install and put the two halves together. So there are tabs between the two halves, the upper and lower half that get, uh, require uh, nut plates and a lot of riveting so that you can assemble them. And then once you have the, the two halves together, then you actually mount it to the tail cone. And what's required there is actually, they give you a template for positioning on the tail cone, but uh, then you have to uh, match drill through the fiberglass, both top and bottom and then install nut plates so that you can put these uh, machine screws in to hold the, uh, the tail cone in place. And uh, once it's on, then you have to do the final shaping of the uh, slot for the push rod. And then you have to adjust the push rod length so that, you, and using the trim tab motor, the servo trim tab motor, to make sure that you get the proper spacing. Um, between the uh, hinge halves. So there's some instructions in the kit assembly instructions that tell you to extend the motor all the way out and then you check the gap on the underside and make sure the hinge has the right gap. So there's some adjustments that you have to make at the very end before the assembly is complete. But a lot of work uh, went into a assembling this and I'm really glad it's all done and it's on the air the airframe now um, other things that we've been working on are the uh, nose wheel fairing as you can see here again comes in two different halves and then there's uh, some shaping that you have to do to make sure that the two halves fit well together um, a lot of hole drilling and counter and um, countersinking and then the forward half gets these brackets mounted. Um, so a little bit of shaping to the aluminum material that goes on the inside um, with additional brackets and a template. So a lot of nut plate work and riveting work that is required uh, to complete this assembly. So I'd say in another week we'll be done with this and ready to mount it on the uh, aircraft. And then uh, the other part that we're working on is actually um, the RV-12, believe it or not, has a, a nose gear leg fairing, and this is it. So I can't imagine it does much for aerodynamics, but it's probably uh, just more for aesthetics. Um, <clears throat> so what you have to do, there's a little, it, it comes somewhat pre-shaped. All you have to do is a little bit of trimming on it. And uh, the, the real work comes in in terms of match drilling the holes on the sides, which are for retaining screws that go into the nose gear leg. So you have to drill through the fiberglass into the steel nose leg strut 
and then tap the nose leg so that the screws will have something to, to uh, thread into in the leg. And then you have to install this hinge on the inside so that the, you can uh, hold the two halves together. You'll see on the bottom side it's actually split. So you need the hinge on the inside to hold the, the uh, two halves together. Um, and so there's a lot of match drilling that you have to do through the sides into the hinge. And then we'll have to do some riveting to hold the hinge in place. And uh, then there's shaping of the uh, hinge pin itself uh, with the retaining uh, nut plate. Um, so you have to shape this hinge pin uh, with, you know, about three 90 degree bends, which is not easy in this spring steel material. And um, so we'll be uh, wrapping this up, uh, I think, this week. And uh, then this will be ready to install. But there'll still be some final shaping once the nose, uh, the nose wheel fairing is in place. We have to check the fit of the nose leg fairing to make sure that we have the proper gap. So if there's not enough gap, we'll have to do some additional trimming on the underside. So that's something you can't do until obviously you get everything together. Um, so that's what we've gotten done on the airframe itself uh, in terms of all the composite work we've been doing. Uh, the other part we've been working on has been the installation of the engine and uh, Mark has been leading that up and uh, he's going to give you an update on where we are with the engine installation. So last time uh, we talked, uh, we had just bolted the engine on to the airframe. Uh, since then, we've uh, torqued all those uh, bolts and got them hooked up. And we spent uh, the majority of the time connecting up all of the, uh, the sensors and so forth. Basically, the, um, the unit comes with a wiring package that has uh, all the basic wiring connections uh, from the uh, control unit out to the various components in the, uh, the engine itself. And what we've spent the time on is making those connections. Uh, things like the fuel sensor, oil temperature sensors. Um, we're just about to hook up the EGTs. There's wiring for that and so forth. Uh, so we've spent some time routing it just the way that uh, Vance has requested and um, making those final connections. Uh, just tonight, we're starting on the uh, the oil in the water system. We just mounted the um, the oil tank. We got to put the plumbing in for that. We've also just mounted the overflow for the um, for the uh, water system and the plumbing that goes along with that. Uh, so we're getting very close to uh, being able to button up the front end and uh, move on. Next step is to uh, connect up the prop and put the pitot tube uh, it's it's interesting on the 12 the pitot tube actually goes right through the center of the prop uh, out the front and we connect that up and then once we've got that done we're, we're ready to put the cowl on and stuff up here so we're also connecting up the uh, radiator uh, hoses and so forth um, and the radiator itself actually mounts on the side here and it ser serves a dual purpose obviously there's uh, air that passes through it which um, you know, will cool uh, the water for the uh, for the engine, but it also serves as the heat system for the interior of the cabin. Uh, there's a little trap door here that can be opened and closed so that that warm air that passes through the radiator goes into the cabin for um, uh, cabin heat. So again, all the hoses, uh, like for the uh, oil system and so forth, are all pre-manufactured and uh, come with fire sleeves and things like that. Basically, all we have to do is just connect them up to the various uh, uh, in and out ports for the oil storage and uh, tank. Also, the radiator system. Uh, also, uh, in, in putting the engine on, they, uh, they call for these uh, little drip pans to be mounted below each carburetor, so we had to pull the carburetors off, fabricate these drip pans, and install those. So once we do get all these uh, connections finally made, uh, the next thing uh, as far as the engine side and some of the control side is, we're ready to uh, hook up the uh, G3X, uh, Garmin G3X uh, 
uh, system and start to configure it for this particular engine and so forth. And again, Vans has a 17-page um, manual that go, uh, puts you through the process of actually programming the G3X for this specific engine and the various Garmin components that we have. So that'll be one of our, uh, our next steps uh, once everything is uh, connected.